Hey guys, my name is Ambika and you are here with me on Unacademy's YouTube channel which is Let's Track Seriously with us. So guys, Unacademy has come up with this new crazy iconic idea. But wait for a sec, we will come back to it but let me tell you about a first plus subscription first. So herein, um, although I'm talking about plus a lot in my all videos but it's like, let's just quickly see what plus is there for all of us. So herein on plus, we will going to have live lesson, lectures and which is at the ease and comfort of your home. So you know like you, we all are stuck and we can't move from our house, isn't it? So that is why An Academy has come up with this idea wherein you can be at the comfort of your ho house and then you can study whatever you want, right? And one thing is very clear that with one subscription, I, I, I repeat, with one subscription, you can check out unlimited access. Like you can actually going to have unlimited access to almost all the courses. Sorry for even using the words almost. In fact, you will going to have access to all the courses out there. Right. Next thing is you will be taught by the nation's best top educators. And they are not simply, you know, they are not like genuinely top notch because, uh, you know, that's what they see. But by their degrees, by their what, from which background they come from, the experience which they have, that is actually making them the best educators of the nation, right? So guys, all you need to do is you need to download this particular app, yeah? Another thing is you will going to have a proper full coverage of all your syllabus in that, right? Whatever the CBC wants you to study, we will going to help you out with that. If CBC has eliminated something, we will surely not going to cover that also. So this is as per the CBC norms. Yeah. Another thing is regular doubt declaring sessions. So whatever doubts you have pertaining to any subject, I repeat pertaining to any subject, we all are there to help you out. Yeah. So herein you will going to have regular doubt clearing sessions plus live test series. So that is like, wow. You know, uh, it is something, you know, we understand, but uh, we, we just try to understand in a way that uh, until and unless we do not even give our test, we aren't sure enough that we got it or not, right? So that is why tests are important, integral part of any of the education system, isn't it? So herein, you will going to have live test series with you, yeah? Next is PDF format of your study material will be available to you. Next is answer writing sessions will be there because you know when it comes to English, uh, we genuinely believe that answering, I mean we know what the question is asking us to write, what the question is actually demanding us but only problem lies in that we are, we simply do not understand like how to begin with it, how to write it down, isn't it? So herein we will going to have answering, you know we will going to help you out like how exactly you can answer your question. So. We will teach you how uh, impressive your answers can be if you will uh, be part of PLUS. So that is a feature of it. Yeah. Next is mentorship and guidance. So we will be your true mentor. So as I have already told you, PLUS subscription comes with daily practice section uh, wherein you are going to have weekly mock tests plus live quizzes are also there. But as I have already told you, as I've already, uh, you know, uh, uh, you cut the nut in a way that in the beginning itself, I told you that we have come up with iconic and iconic herein is genuinely iconic. It is simply not like, you know, just for the sake of saying it. Hi, Alka. Hi, Deepak. Hi, Oam. Sharma. Okay. Hi. So herein, uh, you know, so iconic is something which is like super crazy part of uh, an academy. Right, so let's just check out the features of Iconic. Herein, you will be going to have your educators, wherein you will, they will be your personal mentors as well. So herein, you will going to get one-on-one -on -one, uh, guidance from them. Next is live doubt solving lecture sessions will be there. So wherein you can discuss your academic doubts with them. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now I got it. Hi, Ananya. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Next is weekly report. And in fact, we will going to provide you your weekly report as well. Yeah. 
so that you should know where exactly you are lacking which particular topics are not that strong for you maybe something some topics are way too strong and we still feel like solving them so instead of doing it we will check out your performance right that will be based on like that will be weekly based and you can work on the topics which are not that strong for, uh, for you yeah next is you know in schools we always had those ttms right so in the same way we will going to connect with your parents also we will going to uh, you know if they have any concerns regarding your academic we will surely going to help them out uh, yeah so that you, we can discuss in detail about your performance next is study planner so we will help help you and uh, that will be simply like a track plan of like how you can work on your academic so everything will be planned on our part yeah and whatever were the benefits of plus they all are here as well so iconic is just not the term iconic it uh, this uh, iconic subscription actually meant it yeah so um this i've already told you here in we have got a uh, batches for uh, science and commerce right and it is just not that we were simply going to talk about those heavy joint books i mean i still remember when i was uh, i i'm from a commerce background right later i switched to english honors but yeah so when i was in commerce we always had those giant huge books oops right so uh, we always gave lot of attention to it but here in we will actually going to cover our ncert also plus our other books as well so ncert is also our main focus because we all know right that cbsc do consider ncert so we have got ncert batches right for both commerce for uh, humanities and for everything next is your batches are actually split into two parts so that is like uh, it is like bilingual if you are comfortable in understanding any of those topics in english we have that as well and if you want uh, that language is maybe a barrier for you and you want a better understanding of the topic so that is like hindi is also available for you right and tests i have already told you and one more thing so we have got another creative corner here which is like you know cbsc doesn't believe in something wherein you're just you can excel into your academics but you are not so good in public speaking or maybe you're not so good at certain other platforms so here in an academy has come up with this crazy idea of creative corner right so we believe in the overall development of the learner of the scholar of the child right so that is why they have got this thing like vedic math poetry doodling storytelling public speaking robotics origami mnemonics magic tricks and debating and these are not from somebody who is like you know who just knows it they are from the creative experts who are genuinely expert in their own fields right so they will going to help you out with all these things yeah now i would request guys that you know uh, you should always go for iconic subscription whenever you are trying to be part of us because iconic actually covers your plus as well right so what are the features of plus like india's best educators interactive life classes live tests and quizzes and creative corner right all these things are there in iconic plus it is coming with personal mentor live doubt solution parent contact and connect and study planner so i would request go for your um, plus subscription right and uh, you can use my code for that which is ambika and i'm writing it here for you it is a m b i k a right so guys do 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 avila services and be part of our family right so with this let's talk about the liburnum top it is a beautiful a very tiny sweet little poem right and uh, i hope you will going to enjoy this poem very much because i genuinely liked it yeah and this is being written by one of my personal favorite uh, poet that is ted hughes guys let me tell you a very um, a very a very disturbing fact about ted hughes so ted hughes married sylvia plath sylvia plath is a prolific i mean sorry was a prolific writer right and she was a hardcore feminist like uh, but she died at a very young age and why did she uh, hi god of hi and why did she uh, die because she committed suicide and you know when she committed suicide all across the world it has been rumored that ted hughes and it is pronounced as ted hughes okay so ted hughes is the reason for that 
but honestly ted cruzin was ted cruz wasn't the reason behind that and she was into some mental depression she had a miscarriage and because of which she committed suicide but you know what guys uh silvia plath became more more i mean she was a better i should not say this rather but you know critics also believe that silvia plath was any way better than ted cruz when it comes to comparison you know and uh, but still she committed suicide so whatever their personal reasons were so he became more famous after uh, his uh, wife's suicide right so that is ted cruz yeah so now he was an english poet translator and children's writer critics frequently rank him as one of the best poets of his generation so he is being believed he's been called as the best poet of his generation of the 20th century yeah like the previous century he was appointed poet laureate in 1984 and until the uh, till the time he died he was the poet laureate and he was married uh, to american poet sylvia plath i just told you about sylvia plath so they guys got married but sylvia committed suicide and people believed for a very long time that ted hughes was the reason behind um her suicide but uh, you know when ted hughes uh, the let uh, the, 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 there's some collection of poems you know they called his last letters so in which he is expressing he's telling that i wasn't the reason for sylvia's death it wasn't me otherwise people like you know till the last time also they used to believe that ted hughes was the reason behind his uh, suicide okay so let's quickly read out the whole poem and then we will going to uh, you know split it out into four to five parts wherein and i would request all of you that kindly sit with your pencil and with a book uh, and that is a chapter that is a poem from your hornbill so kindly sit with your uh, poem right uh, and a pencil so that you can write it down the difficult words and the critical appreciation as well yeah so here goes the poem the libernum top is silent quiet still in the afternoon yellow september sunlight a few leaves yellowing all its seeds fallen still the gold flinch comes with a twitching chirrup a sad a suddenness a startlement at a branch end then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of chittering and of tremor of wings and trilling the whole tree trembles and thrills it is the engine of her family she strokes it full then flirts out to a branch end showing her bald face identity mask then with eerie delicate whistle chirrup whispering she launches away towards the infinite and the lebanum subsides to empty uh, to empty right so that is a beautiful poem which is actually talking about a bird right and that bird is gold finch right i repeat that bird is gold finch yeah now So let's quickly see what the whole poem is talking about. The poem "Lebanum Top" by Ted Hughes describes the mutual relation between a lebanum tree and a gold finch. So here in this whole beautiful poem is actually talking about the relationship between the lebanum tree, right? Which is actually find uh, which is there in the UK, right? So that is like wherein this plant grows, this tree grows. and um, it is talking about a mutual relationship between laburnum tree and a goldfinch both of them are yellow in color and you know both this uh, bird goldfinch and the color of the tree is yellow both of them are yellow in color the tree is yellow because of its flowers and quite beautiful in appearance and this tree is uh, actually yellow because of its flowers now The laburnum tree is beautiful, large, but quiet, silent, and getting naked because of winter. So now this is the time of autumn, and what comes after autumn? It is winter, right? Yeah. So therein, because you know the winter is approaching, that is why it is getting naked, right? Getting naked means, uh, you know, and during the time of autumn, also the tree sheds away all its leaves and flowers. So that is why it was all going naked. However, the bird goldfinch appears from the sky, and soon the whole tree is surrounded by the sweet chirps of the bird and her young one. Right. So, after because I, as I just told you that the autumn time was there, 
and what was approaching the winters we all know what happens in winters at least in the uk that the whole tree it because of you know snowfall and everything the whole tree is covered into snow but this is the time of autumn wherein the tree has shed away shed away all its flowers and leaves and that is why it, look, it is looking so naked but up now it is looking so naked right and you know winter actually symbolizes the death also the old age so now because it is autumn plus winter like winters are approaching so that is why this tree laburnum tree is like all alone nobody's come on its top but usi ki bottom ko kill karne ke liye then comes what then comes the gold finch however the bird gold finch appears from the sky and soon the whole tree is surrounded by the sweet chirps of the bird so the moment the bird arrives and suddenly pujo a tree ke wahan pe jo itna sad scenario set up tha it all breaks up and there is a lot of chirping of the bird and that too sweet chirps of the bird and her young ones so that is clearly showing that this bird is the female like a female and then she goes out and hunts for the food for her children right for her young ones it was previously dead and now it seems to be alive what seems to be dead previously it was the tree right it was laburnum tree so it looked like that no life is there dead means that no life is there and now everything is so lively everything is so alive right and shaking until the bird vanishes away again and it all dances with the word that the moment bird arrives it also shakes up and you know when the bird leaves when the word va- vanishes vanishes like disappear bird jab chali jati hai it vanishes uske baad fir se wahan pe ekdam dead silence aa jata hai dead silence prevails means dead silence take over the lot of happening the lot of activity which was taking place now it is being uh, you know taken away by that silence again the poem has been divided into three stanzas now let's just check it out uh, how this poem is being set up this poem is actually divided into three stanzas there is not set rhyme scheme uh, we did this poem no a photograph so there was a proper set rhyme scheme in that poem isn't it but we don't have any rhyme scheme in this Oh, that means if there is no rhyme scheme that is called as blank verse jab kisi bhi poem ke andar koi rhyme scheme nahi hoti hai to hum use bolte hain blank verse yeah the first stanza describes the tree before the bird reaches it so now as we have already came to know that there are three type or three parts of this poem which is like three stanzas so first stanza describes the tree before the bird reaches it so jab tak bird wahan pe nahi aa rahi hai tab tak wo kaisa sa uh, mahol hai wahan pe tree ke paas mein the second stanza describes the coming of the bird so now second stanza mein kya ho raha hai when the bird is there now when the bird is there what suddenly changes up and the final stanza tells the condition of the tree when the bird goes away so the bird like first of all the tree is all alone that is first stanza second stanza is talking about when the bird enters and the third stanza is talking about when the bird again leaves the place right if you have any doubts till now kindly write it down in the comment box otherwise uh, i think i can go ha- ahead shall we like are you okay now we will break this poem into certain lines right so first of all let's talk about the top three lines and what are these uh, let me read the lines for you it says the laburnum top is silent quiet still in the afternoon yellow september sun lies a few leaves yellowing all its seeds fallen okay gorav okay okay deepak yes okay sorry what doubt deepak please write it down if you have any queries please write it down i'm waiting for you deepak kindly mention your doubts
okay okay no ma'am all right okay so i repeat the lines again it says the laburnum top is silent quiet still in the afternoon yellow september sun lies a few leaves yellowing all its seeds fallen so now why fallen because as i have already told you it is a time of autumn the month of september and of october is the month of autumn there right now it is the autumn afternoon guys i request please take out your pencil and write it down as well yeah write down what i'm trying to say so that uh, you know you will not be to miss out anything anything important and relevant it is the autumn afternoon and everything is silent right the it says no the lebanon top is silent quiet still in the afternoon yellow september so it is silent and motionless nothing is moving right the tree has been described as one with yellowish leaves what is the color of all the leaves there on the tree it is yellow again because it is autumn autumn is patajhad patajhad ka mausam aata hai jahan pe trees apne sare leaves sare flowers ko shed away kar deta hai right because the new will turn up right so the tree has been described as one with yellowish leaves and surrounded by fallen seeds what are those fallen seeds jo tree ne khud ne apne shed kiye hain so they all are there beneath i mean on to the leg of the tree yeah the beauty of all autumn season is described vividly right and here in the uh, beauty of the whole uh, described there right so the beauty of the whole autumn season like you know uh, how there are uh, no uh, leaves and uh, flowers on the tree and everything has turned up yellow right yellowish and brownish again guys the color yellow and brown please keep this in mind because that is the color of the bird goldfinch as well right so that is really important for us to keep in mind yeah four to eight line says till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup or chirp a suddenness a startlement at a branch end then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of chitterings and a tremor of wings and trillings the whole tree trembles and thrills right so i request kindly write down the meaning of these words twitching means um i will write it here here is small space so twitching means involuntary movement like movement of the body that is called as twitching yeah involuntary movement i am again and again requesting you guys kindly sit with this poem open in your hand so that you can write it down nidhi you are late for the class but it's okay we have just begin with the laburnum top right the next word is twitching chirrup so twitching again uh, i have told you the meaning of the word twitching and chirp is like the bird ki wo awaaz hoti hai the chirping hoti hai that is called as chirrup or chirp right startlement second stanza mein there is this word in the second line itself that is okay nidhi no problem right startlement that means amazed shocked or happy in fact so that simply means amazed yeah uh till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup a suddenness a startlement and a branch end so wo jo ek bahut hi zyada boring bahut hi zyada dead look tha uh, tree ke wahan pe so that suddenly disappears right then sleek again sleek ka matlab hota hai please guys again again i'm telling you all those who have just entered into my class that kindly sit with this poem open so that you can write down the meaning of the word right and that is sleek means quick movement if you have checked out the lizard on the wall guys aapne pakka kabhi na kabhi life mein lizard dekhi hogi wall pe so moment it sees any mosquito any insect it just like moves very fast like a sleek movement is sleek isn't it so in the same way that is what being made for the bird gold finch now let me read those lines again it says i'm on second stanza guys all those who have just joined my class so it says 
Still the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirp, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end. The moment it arrives, suddenly, वो जो bottom वहाँ पे create हो चुका था, that suddenly disappears. Then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness and the machine starts up. Of chitterings and a tremor of wings and trilling, the whole tree trembles and thrills. Right. So now let's check it out. What the poet is trying to say in those particular lines. This state of calmness and silence is burst. So abhi tak because it was autumn, the tree has already shed away it, all its uh, plants or all its sorry all its leaves. Right. And the seeds are there on the on the floor itself. The fallen seeds are there. Right. उसके बाद the tree is standing all alone. Nobody is coming to that tree because it is the autumn season. Then comes the gold finch. So this state of calmness and silence is burst by the entry of gold finch. So ये जो stillness, ये जो calmness और जो silence था, that suddenly was disturbed, right? Not in fact disturbed. It was burst away by the beautiful entry of the bird gold finch. If you can see the image of gold finch, I think it's very clear. Yeah, it's a beautiful tiny yellow coloured bird who flies in with a twitching chirp. Twitching. I just told you, twitching means involuntary movement. So it suddenly entered, or uh, it suddenly became part of that tree, and startled the whole tree. And startled simply means it started to make noise. It's starting to make you know certain movement there on the tree. She is the mother bird who has come to feed her young ones. And who is she? She is actually the mother bird. And why did she come to Lebanon stop? So that she can come there. She could come there and feed her young one. Um, where are those lines? Yeah. Hmm. The poet uses similes comparing the bird's movement to that of a lizard to describe the alertness and abrupt movement of the bird. I just told you about uh, you know how lizards act, right? So in the same way. The moment this bird has come, so ये जो bird की entry हुई, it actually looked like a lizard, right? So it is actually comparing. जब कभी भी आप notice करना, I don't know many of you have seen it or not. Uh, whenever a lizard sees any sort of insect, तो sudden movement होता है, right? वो जो calmness होती है, वो इतनी देर से wall पे still होती है, and suddenly if it sees any of those uh, insects there. It is actually makes a sudden movement, right? So in the same way, the poet uses simile. So यहाँ पे comparison हो रहा है, guys. The poet has made a comparison uh, of the bird's movement to that of a lizard to describe the alertness and abrupt movement of the body. Abrupt means sudden. Abrupt means sudden, out of nowhere, right? Now, ninth line is. Let's read ninth line, guys. It says, "The whole tree trembles and thrills. It is the engine of her family. She stoops it full, then flirts out to a branch end, showing her bald face identity mask." Right. So she stoops. She stoops means she. Uh, I'm writing it here. Hmm. Stoops. That is, I think, uh, line number tenth of your book. So stoke simply means add fuel, right? And fuel then a uh, flirts out to a branch end. Flirts it's like moving. यहाँ पे flirts का मतलब है simply moving, make a movement, okay? Yeah, and they showed her bard face identity mark. Now guys, यहाँ पे bard का मतलब क्या है? Uh, जो uh, गोल्डफिंच होती है दैट इज लाइक टू इट हैज एक्चुअली टू कलर राइट सो यहाँ पे बाद का मतलब है दैट इट हैज गॉट स्ट्रिप्स उसके फेस पे यहाँ पे स्ट्रिप्स बने हुए हैं यू नो यू कैन सी दैट देर आर लाइक टू कलर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दैट इज येलोइश एंड ब्लैक इश इन कलर इज इन इट सो नाउ देर आर लाइक बाद जैसे कि जब सोल्जर्स जाते हैं बाहर कभी किसी वॉर पे सो दे गेट कैमोफ्लाज कैमोफ्लाज हो जाता है कि Uh, you know, if they are, uh, for example, Indian soldiers. Let's talk, let's just talk about them. So, their uniform is like camouflage to the forest area. 
isn't it aur un wo log apni face pe black laga lete so that they won't be able to be identified by the enemy right so that is called as camouflage ab usi color ke ho jao jis color mein aap uh, jis color ka aapka environment hai right so what this trying to say uh, let's read the lines again it says of chitterings and a tremor of wings and thrilling the whole team trembles and thrills it is the engine of her family she stalks it full then flirts out to a branch and showing her bad face identity mask So in these lines, the poet has compared the now alive tree. Why are we calling it that? That a now alive tree? Because this tree was actually all not dead, but it was standing in all seclusion. Seclusion means a kela, right? Because as I have already told you, this tree has shed away its uh, leaves because it was the autumn season, right? Now. The poet has compared the now alive tree. You got my point. Ha ha ha! This is class eleven. Yeah. So now this particular, uh, you know, this particular bird is like the moment this bird enters, and suddenly there is like a whole life-changing experience for the tree, right? And The poet has compared the now alive. Why are we calling it now alive? Because it was all alone initially earlier, but now it is active. Tree to an engine. Now let's just see why poet has called this tree as an engine. With the bird's arrival to her nest, the entire tree has transformed into a machine. What kind of a literary device is being used here, guys? Can anybody tell me? Um. I hope you all know it because we are already done with one, uh, you know, one such type of a lecture wherein we discuss about the literary devices. Although we will talk about all those literary devices which are used in this poem later. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm leaving, ma'am, because I'm. In... But you are in grade eleven, is it so, Alka? I didn't get it. Sorry. So now, uh, with the bird's arrival to her nest, the entire tree, so so the whole whole tree has transformed into a machine, and the dead silence that surrounded the tree is replaced with noise and activity. So now it looks like the wo tree hai, it is the engine, or jisko fuel up kisne aakar kia hai, jisko fuel up aake kia hai gold finch ne, right? or the moment it has arrived right the tree is replaced with noise and activity so suddenly wo jo dead silence tha wo replaced ho gaya us tree ka and suddenly there was like lot of hustle and bustle and so many activities so many noise were taking place the whole tree trembles and thrills right trembles means shakes and it is all thrilling yeah then comes the last line Sorry, it says then with weary. That is weary means strange. It means strange, weird, right? Hmm. Then with weary, delicate whistles, chirp, whispering, she launches away towards the infinite, and the laburnum subsides to empty. And subsides means. Return back. Okay. So as I have already told you, this poem is actually divided into how many parts? Into three parts. So the first part was talking about that the Lebanon tree was standing all alone because it was the time of autumn and nobody was there. Second is the entry of the bird, right? That we have already checked out. Now it comes when the tree. The third part, the third stanza is, uh, is talking about when the bird, uh, sorry, when the tree is all alone. Again, there was like lot of hustle and bustle the moment birds arrived, but now it has gone back to the same thing where it was all alone, right? The tree is the engine of the goldfinch family, right? The mother bird comes and fuels it by feeding her young one. So it is being compared that you know this goldfinch bird, uh, you know for her this this tree is actually an engine, or the engine case is start hota hai when it Fuels when it feeds. Here, fuels means what? When it feeds her young one, the tree comes alive as if an engine has been started. 
and it looks like jaise ki jaise goldfinch enters and then it feeds its its, its little ones right so it looks like that the engine has been started after a long time wherein the engine was standing all alone suddenly the engine was active enough once she was stoked it full so stoked means uh, khana khilana right or fuel the engine of the laburnum tree and it fuels the engine okay of the laburnum tree she runs to the end of the branch from where her bard face is visible to the spectators so once she is done feeding her little ones she just go away and she comes at the end of the branch right she comes at the end of the branch where her bard face i just told you what a what a bard uh, you know they like script jahan pe scripts bani hui hoti hai so now her bard face is visible to the spectators right spectators is somebody who is looking at the whole process and who is looking at the whole process that is our very own poet right the laburnum tree has yellow flowers and the goldfinch is a yellow bird right so now what is the color of a uh, of our laburnum uh, the flowers of laburnum that is yellow and you have simply checked out i have used so many pictures of the bird right here so here in we can simply see that the color of the bird is your yellow i just go told you the example of the word uh, camouflage camouflage matlab hota hai hum jis color ke hain usi color ka aapka jo environment aapke aas pass ki jo cheeze hain wo bhi same color ki hi hain that is simply called as camouflage jaise ki soldiers apne aap ko camouflage karke rakhte hain whenever they go for war right so first of all those army people they have the same uniform which is like of the outer environment right and they put away those stripes on their faces right so in the same way the laburnum flowers are also yellow in color and that is the color of our beautiful bird also the laburnum tree has yellow flowers and the goldfinch is a yellow bird with a black mark on her face um i think yes if you can see this picture out so we can see a yellow mark on her face and she is all yellow in color yes thus she has a bard face and is distinguishable even if the rest of her body gets camouflaged because of this black mark now she is easily now she can be easily distinguished by you know among all those uh, leaves which are or among those flowers which are present there on laburnum tree right because of the laburnum yellow laburnum flower right all those see because of a black bard you know uh, it is which is line number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so this line is saying that showing her bard face identity mask now how somebody can even recognize her with her bard face and what is that bard face that black color of a uh, black color which is being presented on her face that is her identity mask from whatever is being there on that laburnum tree because the color of laburnum flowers is all yellow and that is why she all get mingles up with that tree right um so let's just quickly see what we have read in the first part it says the laburnum tree is beautiful large but quiet silent and getting naked because of winter so now we know that this is why it is getting uh, naked because it is the time of autumn and just after autumn here comes the winter however the bird goldfinch appears from the sky and soon the whole tree is surrounded by the sweet chirps of the bird and her young one so now in the second stanza we have checked out that this stillness of the tree is being killed is being uh, is being removed by the bird goldfinch yeah when she comes up to feed her little one it was previously dead and now what was previously dead the tree but now it seems to be alive and shaking until the bird vanishes away again so till the time bird decides to go away it is all very active right now after that the moment the bird leaves it all actually goes back to the dead silence right as i have already told you there are three stanzas in the poem which we have just checked out right so and there is another important thing that no rhyme scheme is being used in this poem yeah the first stanza talks about the tree 
wherein this tree is all alone the second stanza describes the bird when the bird enters when the bird flies down to the laburnum top and the third stanza again talks about the condition of the tree when the bird goes away i hope that is clear right now let us quickly see what the poet is saying to us so the poet has referred to this as her bard face identity mask as it makes her recognizable from afar so now poet has actually said that this particular mark on her face is so rec recognizable that anybody can see her from the distance also then with a strange yet delicate whistle chirp the bird flies away towards the sky now after you know once she has done feeding up her little one she again goes back to the world of sky right as soon as she flies away the laburnum tree retreats retreat means going back retreat means go back right go back to its silent and inactive state so once the bird goes away again the laburnum tree goes back to its silent and inactive state right so that was all about a beautiful poem the laburnum top let's see the critical appreciation of the poem so a poem of 15 lines that is rich in imagery this poem is actually got 15 lines and in each line we can check out so many imageries are being used by the poet yeah don't you agree with me you know like how september sunlight the fallen seed and you know uh, the the example of a lizard right how the noise of the birds and the chirping of the birds along with that that bard face so here it, i mean when we were reading this we can actually imagine the whole situation isn't it so that is called as imagery images are being used here yeah the poet is the narrator who observes the tree and the bird from a distance you know and we just came to know that the poet has mentioned that you know because of the bard face the bird is like can be identified can be identified from the distance isn't it so that clearly showed that who is uh, who is the poet i mean the poet and the narrator are the same person here right he would provide a vivid picture of the tree and the activities that surround it through the usage of poetic devices and we i mean literally there are so many poetic devices which are being used by the poet by ted hughes you know which is clearly making this this poem very rich in imagery right and as i have already told you there is no rhyme scheme in this poem right no rhyme scheme if you will check out none of the lines are rhyming with each other so this poem is all written in blank words blank words hota hai jisme koi bhi rhyme nahi hoti hai use hum bolte hain blank words now let's check out the poetic devices yes first one is simile simile means we are done with similes isn't it when we would be checked out all those poetic devices right so simile it means like or as when you are comparing things with this particular term that is like and as isn't it yeah so in this poem the poet has compared the movements of the goldfinch with that of a lizard right uh, that is 3 4 5 6 lines it says then sleep as a lizard right so here in one simile is being used when the poet has compared the movement of the bird goldfinch with that of a lizard nahi deepak kal there will be no class for sure no 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 not tomorrow please next is metaphor so metaphor ka matlab kya hota hai when we are trying to compare two unlikely ideas or objects hum sab kisi bhi cheez ko compare kar rahe hain without like or as right so that is called as metaphor hi kalp now so the poet makes use of metaphors when he refers to the tree as the engine you remember the poet has called this tree as the engine jisko kaun fuel up kar raha hai kis jisko kaun feed up kar raha hai by feeding uh, its own little ones the goldfinch is actually making this engine right this engine here refers to the tree got my point what this tree is this tree is being called as the engine yeah 
the poet makes use of a metaphor when he refers to the tree as the engine of the goldfinch family yes he also compares the nest of the goldfinch with her chicks to a machine as her arrival brings her um yeah so it says he also compares the nest of the goldfinch yeah please uh, ask kalpana i hope i will help you out and if you think it is really important to discuss it here uh, mention it if you can skip it out so like call is yours you decide um reincarnation means you know uh, the next life it will be there like reincarnated for example lord vishnu we have a vishnu bhagwan with us right so lord vishnu actually appeared in different forms in different eras right you agree with me right lord vishnu was uh, hi pragati lord vishnu was reincarnated as lord ram right lord vishnu incarnated as um, as 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 uh, krishna also so right there are so many reincarnation right it is being believed that one fine day when the world will come to an end the god will reincarnate in some way or the other right so that is simply called as reincarnation brought her simply means wherein uh, you know people go out for their physical satisfaction like they want physical satisfaction from somewhere or someone else wherein women or men you know depends they sell out their bodies and they want some physical um, attention from somebody else that is called as brothel yeah let's just come back to this i hope um, yeah that is more important i mean let's just finish it up hi pragati yes so now here in the poet has used the metaphor also we have just checked out what was the metaphor that was the engine yeah next is onomatopoeia we all know this wherein we are getting the sound sound effect right that is called as onomatopoeia yeah so that is chittering shrilling tremor of wings whistle chirp or whispering yes so they all are for onomatopoeia next is personification that is so easy to find it out i believe the attribution of personal nature characteristics to something non human that was simply called as personification so the whole tree trembles and thrills so tremble means actually shivers away and thrills means shows the excitement so these things can be done by the human only don't you agree with me right trembling and thrilling is something which is part of humans only right so that is why it is called i mean we have also used personification here now these are the terms which you should know once uh, i mean if you want to be very clarified with this poem right and i hope all of you are sitting with the book and a pencil or a pen in your hand so if you want you can write down the meaning of these words as well they are glossy okay so laburnum that is the golden chain tree a commonly found tree with golden flowers that hangs in bunches that is laburnum right laburnum top is the highest branch of the tree the title of the poem right laburnum top so that is the highest branch of the tree goldfinch is a yellow colored bird and the male of the species has black markings across the face on the wings and the tail so i think uh, that was like throughout the pictures which we have checked uh, let me see the other pictures so here in it was the male bird why because we just checked out that the goldfinch with you know it has a black markings across the face and on the wings and the tail so this one the picture which we have got that is of a male goldfinch yes and um um are you that is not relevant to our topic what i'm trying to teach right now so maybe if it comes up with any of our topics i'll surely help you out right and you don't need to delete your uh, messages i have just taken a screenshot so yeah anyway twitch so twitch is small often involuntary movements of a body part 
I repeat that is called as an involuntary movement of a body part. Chirp is an onomatopoeic word capturing the sound nail of by a bird. Right? So that is something which is being referred to as the sound as the voice of the bird. Hi Sushant, good afternoon. Starletment means simply amazement. That is like super excitement or up it comes to surprise or shock. Ho jate ho. That is startlement. Right? Next is sleep. This word we have checked out uh, in the context of the lizard. Remember that? So, in the context of the poem, it could imply a quick movement without much disruption. I just told you, if you have seen a uh, lizard, ko dekha hoga, right? So, it is like all dead. Wo ek dam na wall pe jab hoti hai, so, it is like all dead. Kabhi kuch, it doesn't make any... Tak ek hi position mein hai. But the moment it sees any insect, any, any, uh, any, 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 you know, like any insect or any mosquito, it just travels away to it, right? It just like moves there in such a sleek manner, right? So that is called as sleek, like in a very smooth, in a very uh, in like rush, quick movement of the body. Here, that is the meaning of the word sleek. Yeah, Hanji Sushant, I think I know you. Uh, Sushant, this class has already started up exactly at uh, three o'clock. So yes. Next is abrupt. Abrupt. I have used many term be used. Kya hai? Abrupt means like sudden. Or it them say like, you know, sudden beginning, sudden opening that is called as abrupt or unexpected. Yeah. Next is chittering. So chittering is the sound of the word or ye word actually used kya gya hai in the context to make it clear. Aapko wo word sunai bhi de. Like chittering. How like, uh, you know, that, uh, that, you know, the word, the voice of that word that is called as chittering. Tremor simply means shake. Chilling means singing, like the repetitive singing of the bird. Again, that was a clear example of our onomatopoeia. Stoke simply means adding up fuel. And by adding up fuel, it was simply saying that she, the bird has provided the nutrition. Thank you, Deepak. Uh, yeah. So here in, uh, you know, Stokes is actually like feeding up the uh, the other bird right that is called as stoke because it actually came up there to um it's okay sushant you can check out this session again if you want to yeah so this bird has come up to feed its little ones as well isn't it now pe flirt ka matlab tha, like it actually started moving light steps ke saath move karna, that is the example of flirt uh, every I told you that is like a strange movement. Hanji, uh, Sushant, there will be a special class for sure. Yes, infinite means, uh, you know, in the outer sky, once it has fed up with its own little ones, it just moves away. Launches means flies away in the sky and subsides means returns or reduces in, in intensity. So guys, with this, let's check out the question and answers of our NCRT book. First of all, there are certain key points of this poem. It says, Hughes is trying to convey the message that life is a process of exchange and transformation. Right? A life. A life is something wherein there is, a, there is like every inch, every day, some sort of changes are being made. Right? So there is a plant, then it becomes a tree and you know, uh, then comes the time of a tree when it needs to shed away its leaves. Right, so every day some sort of transformation is being made in our life. People are alive because they undergo uh, exchange of energy. Now we believe that we have got some sort of energy. And wo kaise hota hai? maybe one of us are feeling sad, one of us are feeling lonely. What do we do? That's great, Sushant. Okay, the timings are from 6 onwards. Don't be late there. Yes. So therein what happens when we feel lonely, we speak with our friends, we talk to our cousins, we go out, right? So that is something. Uh, but chapter kuch time mein, Deepak, let me like, please, uh, I have a planned schedule. Uske saath hi follow karte hai, please. Abhi bird chapter, I don't think so. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you know, jabhi mein prepare kar lungi us chapter ko for our, uh, uh, you know, YouTube session, I will let you know for sure. Yeah. 
so you know whenever we feel dead whenever we feel not so interested in anything so that actually uh, being given up like that is actually something which is uh, uh, you know provided to us by our cousins maybe by our friends right so hame energy kisi aur se bhi it, it we just get it right the goldfinch is transform the tree and make it alive and this goldfinch bird it actually made that jo jo tree wo bahut deadly tree ho chuka tha usko wo fir se aake it gives away the life without the goldfinches and the chicks chicks are the baby birds yeah the laburnum is just another tree the poem examines and articulates the interrelationship between the soul and body through common symbols of bird and tree like you know how we feel uh, not so connected with the with you know we feel like we have no energy you know so that is like that a uh, bird is actually a clear symbol of a soul wherein it is actually always vibrant it is our body which gets tired but our soul never gets old but our soul never gets tired of any thing right now the question first is what do you notice about the beginning and the ending of the poem what was it so at the beginning and the ending of the poem the laburnum tree was standing still and silent just like death i as i've already told you this poem is being divided into how many parts into three parts wherein in the first and the third part the tree is all alone and the second part is wherein the bird enters right so the first i mean the beginning and the ending is where the tree is standing still silent just like a death so what is the bird's movement compared here in bird ka mov- movement kis se compare kiya gaya tha we have just checked out the metaphor also it was with the lizard what is the basis for the comparison so on what basis the comparison has been made the goldfinch movement is compared to that of the lizard because she was abrupt sleek and alert right the same movements were observed when she arrived at the tree and moved to the thickness side of the branch to feed her young one and we can check out her movement we can see her movement when she comes and feeds her young ones so how active she is just like that lizard you know so how active she is the bird is we can simply check it out question number 3 is why is the image of the engine evoked by the poet so why uh, the poet has used this imagery of the engine as the engine is the source to run the machine so why do we need engine so that you know it can run the machine you know it makes the machine active working functional the bird is compared to the engine as she is the feeder of her family so the bird is actually is being compared to the engine another thing is you know uh, this engine is actually the tree also you can make it out the way you want it is totally your call yeah as a machine cannot work without an engine her family can't work without her because she only comes and feeds her little one right what do you like i know sushant you're way 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 too late for the class so even i can't uh, help you out that is what i'm requesting please check out the whole video again so that it is a very small tiny little poem and there are like no such things which you won't understand trust me right so what do you like most about this poem so uh, i mean that is simply your own answer i'm simply providing you my own which is i like the comparison of the state of the tree before and after the goldfinch arrives and it makes the death like tree alive that is my own assumption that is my own idea you can frame out your own also um question number 5 yeah that is the last question it says what does the phrase her bard face identity mask mean i told you that the bird sorry the flowers of the laburnum is also yellow in color right and in fact here in the bird has also got the yellow color but that bard face ident is actually played as the identity mask for the bird which is actually making uh, her distinguishable from the whole tree right 
now note down the sound word the movement word the dominant color in the poem so what are those so the sound words were according to me if you find out any please let me know also but according to me they were twittering chirp twittering trillings and whispering right so they all were the sound words yeah next is the movement words so like what were those movement words they were come enters starts up flutters out launches away tremble jisme hame movement feel ho raha hai right recognizing means pehchan na pehchan na yeah jisme hame a movement feel ho raha hai laptop to sand laptop yeah subside so they all are actually called as the movement word next is uh, the dominant color in the poem so the whole the you know throughout the time it is color yellow yeah that we all know i believe now words which describe sleek alert and abrupt so hum ye wali words humne uh, kis context mein padhe the we have checked out these words in the context of the lizard machine and suddenness yeah words with the sound ch as in chart and thur as trembles in the poem so if you come across any of such words you have to jot it down so that is the sound ch that is goldfinch the sound is ch branch chittering ch trilling twitching and tremor yeah next is other sound that occupy frequently in the poem so that occur frequently in the poem that is ing bahut zyada ing ka use hua that is twittering chitterings wings trillings and whispering so i hope this whole beautiful poem is very clear to you all so this way we are done with the poem the laburnum top yeah where in on the laburnum top the beautiful goldfinch birds come and it sits down there yeah so i hope this is very clear and sorted to each one of you you don't have if you have any doubts you can write in the comment box and i assure you i promise you that i will help you out with that so um if you have again any doubts i'm waiting you can write it down another thing guys don't forget to be part of our unacademy family right and for that when once you're going to enroll yourself you can use my code which is ambika right so that you will going to get a 10% discount yes all right guys so i am thank you sushant thank you nidhi i hope all of you got this poem very clearly yeah and it was a beautiful poem though right it was a tiny little cute poem so guys with that i'll take your leave do study hard and if you still have any doubts you can write in the comment box and i'm sure i'll help you out and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well yes all right with that i'll take your leave do take care of yourself and do